Karen. I'm a social dancer and teacher of social dancing, and I also happen to be deafblind. I'm Vineet Prabhu. I'm a salsa dancer here in Boston. Put your hands on top of mine. Imagine that my hands are the floor and you feel this pulsing. Yeah. One, two, three. Five, six, seven. And you always hear that expression, feel the music, and you are literally doing that. There are all times when the music just resonates through my entire body, and I can feel it in my heart. When you stand near a speaker or on the floor, it just, it starts from the toes and it moves its way up and it just takes over. I think being able to feel the music through vibration and a sensation to dance instead of trying to dance through listening gives me a chance to really let go and trust myself. What's happening behind me is people who are deaf and people who are hearing and some people who are deaf blind are dancing together as a way to come together from different backgrounds. It's just really inspiring to see people come together on the dance floor no matter where they came from, who they are. So what is the goal of this dance class? When I first started teaching dance, I was just trying to give a few friends who were deaf an opportunity to learn how to start to dance instead of speaking verbally to teaching a sign language to think about making it more visual instead of more by auditory. More and more people started asking me for dance classes, not just people from the deaf community. And I started to see this evolution of people who have no connection to disability or the deaf world starting to learn more about the people they were dancing with. And I just had this moment of, aha, that's how I can get people without disability to care. It's a way of bringing these two different communities together through dance. My family learned when I was two years old that I was deaf, and later at 10 years old found out that I was going blind. What I have is called Usher syndrome. I can't hear words, so I'm looking at a person and using my limited eyesight to lip read. Right now, I can see them, but here, I can't. And so I can't see anything in my peripheral. My eyesight is deteriorating, but my vision, my ambition for the future is not deteriorating. My dream was to be a pediatrician. The pre-med advisor told me to change my major because she said you will never get into medical school because of your deafness. They didn't know about the part about not being able to see. I didn't know what to do. I just thought this long road ahead, the challenge that so many doors would be slammed in my face and it might not get me anywhere. I decided if I wanted a good future, I had to go where the opportunities were. I ended up getting my master's degree from Harvard University. I became involved with human rights for people with disabilities around the world, especially in developing countries. And of course, learning dance and being part of the Boston dance community and having dance be part of a medium for change. How did you meet Vineet? Vinny and I were taking dance classes together under the same teacher. We would have fun dancing with each other. We started to develop a strong friendship. He got to know about my background, my interests, my challenges. Being to know her gave a different perspective on, on things you sort of take for granted, right? Yeah. Particularly, you know, being able to hear the beat and just life in general. We did a bunch of performances, we practiced, we traveled to perform as well. All over New England and we met with other people in Cuba to learn about dancing, to perform together. <laughs> Why do you think it's so important to have friendships with people of such different backgrounds? Because I think it helps you get a wider perspective on the world, I think, and makes you uh, sort of more aware of things that you take for granted oftentimes, and being able to communicate with a wider group of people who you otherwise might not interact with. Yeah, because you don't know ASL, and yet for uh -huh. over a decade, you two have been communicating on that dance floor. I think when we were first dancing, you were kind of a geek. <laughs> Still am. <laughs> <laughs> You're at my team, I'm Harvard. <laughs>
or dancing with anybody. I think that that sort of transcends any sort of ability or language or culture. Sometimes it's just about being brave enough to be the first person to ask, come on, let's go down, or to reach out to another community. This is a sign for I love you. It's the I L Y. How do you say, do you want to dance? You want to dance here? I don't know if I'll be able to keep up with you here. I did cotillion when I was a kid, but uh... Oh. <laughs> One, two, three, five, six, seven. Great! I like that, I'm learning quick! Salsa's you learn so me. quick, yeah! I might have to do some swing. I know how to, do we have any swing music? <laughs> Da, da, da. <laughs> All right, good times. Thank you for that dance. I'm Michael Koenigs, the host of More in Common. And if you have a story idea, be sure to comment below and subscribe for our next episode.